It's only a week or so away before the kids are going back. And yeah. the parents are rushing around to make sure the children are ready with the right clothing, the right supplies. But it's also the time of year to make sure kids don't get sick right out of the gate. And joining us now is Dr. Ron Supernon. Medical Director of Buckeye Health Plan. Doctor, thanks so much for being here today. We appreciate it. So we're going to take all these kids who hopefully have been outside and running around. They're not really in big old groups too much, and we're going to put them all in the same place at the same time. And that can be a, a recipe for communicable illnesses to start spreading around, right? Absolutely. So the first thing that the parents should be doing now is already getting the kids in for their school physicals and making sure that their immunizations are up to date. Kids who are going into preschool, kindergarten, seventh, and twelfth will all need new immunizations. Okay. 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 All right. And that that's kind of like the protection right there. But that's right. Uh, it, inevitably, they are going to not feel well. Uh, it's, it's just. It just happens. Uh, as a parent, if you're a working parent, especially, I, I mean, uh, the panic sets in. What do I do? Do I keep them home and comfort them, or, or do I take them to the doctor? What do I do? Uh, what are some signs you we should look for as parents? Well, I think the things that you should look for in terms of keeping your children home from school are fever, vomiting, yeah. diarrhea. And diarrhea will be uh, more than two loose stools. Yeah. Uh, if they have any of those things, they really should be kept home for 24 hours after that stops, so after the fever is gone, sure. after the vomiting has ended, so that they won't be spreading this to someone else. Sure. And it yeah. really is kind of amazing how things have changed, though. I mean, it used to be you, you, you muscled through. Right. You, know, you know what I mean? You tried you try to go to school. You didn't want to miss a day. You get a special award if you don't miss a day <laughs> from school and all that. And it really, we, we've sort of gone the other way now. I mean, at, at school, they, frankly, they, they don't want you there if you're sick because they know you've got the, the chance you're going to get somebody else sick right. as well. That's absolutely right. So that, those, those are the reasons to stay home for the 24 hours is because that's when you're most likely to be spreading that to someone else. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, we all know that sleeping and, and eating the right, eating correctly uh, can help to stave off ill and that sort of thing. Uh, these children have spent too much. They're not only in a sort of routine or eating whatever they want to. Uh, what's, the best, what's the best way to get them back into a routine of, of healthy eating and, and, and enough sleep? It's a great question. So several days before school starts, the parents really need to be getting the kids back into a regular routine. And that should involve a regular bedtime. This is going to be the bedtime they're going to go use during school and then a regular wake-up time with an alarm going through the exact process that they're going to use for school. Um, I think most parents, or many parents, don't give their kids enough sleep and they don't have a regular enough schedule. So having a, a set bedtime seven days a week actually is ideal. Set wake up time seven days a week is really better. And kids need a minimum of eight hours of sleep. And many kids need more than that, nine or even more than that. Yeah, I know with teenagers especially, that could be, that could be hard yeah, to get, get that eight hours <laughs> in, you know, before all is said and done. Right. You know, another thing, other just, uh, you know, you're basically getting a cold, getting whatever when you get in. Another thing to think about as kids go back to school is if they start having problems early on, maybe they're sitting in the back of the classroom this year and they were sitting in the front of the classroom, you know, last year, and they're having difficult difficulty seeing things. That can really have an impact on how their performance is going to be in school this year. Uh, vision is critical not only for school performance, but for, for social performance and for athletics. So um, yeah. most schools do a vision screening every other year. Okay. And usually if you go to your doctor for a pre-school pre exam, you will get uh, a vision screening. But that's not a complete eye exam. So we actually at Buckeye recommend that you, the children, all school age children, get an annual complete eye exam by an eye health care professional. Yeah, that's what helped me. I've been wearing glasses since I was 10 years old. But for my first few years in school, I always sat in the front. Yeah. And so I didn't realize I, did, I couldn't see until I moved out of that comfort range and everything. So, and it was an important development because my grades went up like immediately. That's great. Now, there are many signs that you can look for as a parent uh, or as a teacher that their child is having trouble with their vision. Um, difficulty seeing the board or sitting in the front of the seat all, front row all the time would be one. But children may develop headaches. Uh, you may notice them squinting or blinking. Uh, a decline in school performance would be another example. Yeah, you got to watch careful too. Because if you were like me, I learned how to fake it pretty good too. Before I started wearing my contact lenses. <laughs> Doctor, thank you so much for coming in. We really do appreciate yeah, it. Yeah, we do. Back to school welcome. before we know it. All right, uh, let's check weather. Here's